Fisher of men. In our last story, the ministry of Jesus began to take on form. Jesus would preach with authority, heal with compassion, and cast out demons with power. His fame began to grow rapidly. Now we learn about Jesus' individual ministry. He did not just preach to crowds. He would connect with individuals and change their lives forever. Inspired by the Gospels. Hello and welcome once again to The Bible in a Year. This is Jack Graham. In our last episode, we heard how despite the miracles that Jesus performed and the wisdom and insight with which he spoke, Jesus was not accepted by all and was even run out of his own hometown of Nazareth under threat of death. Still, crowds continued to flock to Jesus to hear him speak and to catch a glimpse of the marvelous miracles, wonders that he performed. Today, we'll hear how Jesus encountered men and women at a very personal level, healing not only their physical illnesses, but opening their eyes to a life of abundance and joy and changing their hearts forever. So, let's listen now to the Word of God in the Gospels of Jesus Christ. Peter leaned his head against the mast of his boat. An entire night wasted on the water had yielded no fish. He had toiled relentlessly only to come up empty. Andrew was washing the nets beside him. He too was disappointed at the lack of fish. Peter looked up at the clouds and listened to the seagulls fly out to sea. Perhaps the birds would have better luck than him. He sighed and began to close his eyes and rest. The gentle breeze rolled in from the water and gently rocked his boat. Peter's moment of peace was quickly interrupted by the sound of people. Peter opened his eyes and saw hundreds of people following Jesus. They were so desperate to hear him that they were nearly trampling him to get closer. Jesus could see Peter and Andrew from a distance. He waved and jogged over to them. Would you mind letting me use your boat to teach from? The crowds will trample me if I don't get above them. Peter agreed. His boat might as well get some use for that day. Jesus spoke for a while. Peter listened from behind, half listening, half daydreaming. After Jesus was finished, he turned back to Peter and Andrew. Why don't we go out into the deep and put your nets out for a catch, Jesus asked. Peter gave a condescending laugh. Master, we have toiled all night and have nothing to show for it. He looked at Jesus. He was earnest and clearly wanted Peter to take the boat out. Peter shrugged. Fine, at your word, we will go out. So Peter and Andrew reluctantly took the boat out. Peter gathered up the nets and tossed them to the side of the boat. Then Peter sat, knowing that nothing would catch. Just as Peter was getting comfortable, he could hear the sound of stretching rope. The net was tightening on the side of the boat. Peter leaped to his feet and looked overboard. His net was completely filled with fish, so much that the net seemed like it was about to break. Peter, Andrew, and Jesus tugged on the nets and hurled in the largest catch Peter had ever witnessed. The nets on the other side of the boat were overflowing as well, so Peter gestured for James and John to bring out their boats as well. The men rejoiced with their catch. This bigger catch would provide for their families for months. All the men danced in place and shouted for joy, but not Peter. He looked at Jesus and fell to his face. He was broken. He felt unworthy of Jesus' gift. Depart from me, Lord, he said. I am a sinful man. Peter bowed his head before him. Jesus knelt down and placed his head on Peter's shoulder. From now on, I will teach you how to be a fisher of men. So the two of them departed with Andrew, James, and John. Later that evening, Jesus was able to heal Peter's mother-in-law. Peter's entire world was being transformed by Jesus. Jesus was walking among one of the cities, observing the needs of the people around him. As he was pacing the city, Jesus stumbled upon a man stricken with leprosy. The entire left side of his face was mangled, and he could barely lift his arms from the pain of rotting flesh. The man approached Jesus gently. The men who were following Jesus stepped back, but Jesus stepped forward. The leper fell at Jesus' feet. Please, Lord, have mercy on me. The man began to weep. If you are willing, I know you can make me clean. Jesus' eyes began to water as he listened to the man's cries. He knew how much pain he was in. 
He knew how lonely leprosy had made him. Jesus knelt down and hugged him. He held him in his arms as he wept. I am willing, Jesus whispered. Be clean. And as Jesus spoke, the leper's limbs and face began to show color once again. The leprosy had left him. The man leapt for joy. He wiggled his arms and kicked his feet. He was a new man. Jesus instructed him to tell nobody of what happened. He was to go into the temple and give thanks to God. However, the man did not listen. He shouted Jesus' name in the city streets. As a result, droves of people came to him with their infirmities. Jesus would spend all day helping them. Then, when the sun set, he withdrew to a secret place to meet with God in quiet. In today's scripture, we find Peter and Andrew tired and disappointed after a fruitless night of fishing the Sea of Galilee. For them, fishing was not a pastime that took them away from the stress of work. It was work and life itself. And the previous night had been frustrating as they returned to shore empty-handed. While they were washing their nets, Jesus approached them, followed by a large crowd of people wanting to hear him speak. This was becoming very common at this point as droves of men and women followed Jesus everywhere, hanging on his every word. Jesus asked the fishermen if he could set off in their boat and speak to the crowds from the water. So, with the prow of a boat for a pulpit, Jesus spoke. The Son of God would have known the practical benefit of speaking from that place, as his voice would carry well over the water and into the crowd. And as I think of this scene, I can't help but be reminded of Psalm 29, which says the voice of the Lord is over the waters. And here we find that the Lord's voice literally went out over the waters to those who came to hear him. It was loud and clear. When he was done teaching, Jesus asked Andrew and Peter to put out into the water again and throw their nets out again to catch some fish. The experienced and exhausted fishermen scoffed. They just tried all night and returned with empty nets. So, naturally, Peter doubted the likelihood of having any different results at this hour. But still he replied, as we read in Luke 5, But because you say so, I will let down the nets. Now, that is a very important lesson for all of us. Because you say so. Peter was doubtful, and yet he obeyed. You see, doubt is not the opposite of faith. Unbelief is. Peter had some doubts and reservations. Even his past experience gave him some pause. But he did trust in Jesus. And so they lowered their nets in faith and obedience. And when they tried to pull the nets back in, they were astounded, amazed. The nets that had returned empty time and time again just hours ago were filled with fish. The catch was so big that their nets nearly broke and their boats nearly sank. Peter's response to this was to fall at the feet of Jesus and acknowledge his position, a sinner unworthy of such grace and blessing. Whereas the religious leaders of the day walked with their heads high, feeling entitled to God's blessing because of their rule following and strict living, Peter knew he was undeserving and fell in humble worship, depending upon the grace of the Lord. Rather than go away as Peter asked him to do, Jesus gently, graciously took Peter and told him that there was still much fishing to be done. Only now, he would become a fisher of men. Surely the words must have been puzzling to Peter. How does one fish for people? And still, again, Peter followed by faith, along with Andrew, James, and John. Three of these men would become closer to Jesus than any other, the inner circle of disciples, and they were all fishermen. Later that evening, Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law, bringing healing and transformation into the apostles' household. But Jesus' healing ministry was not reserved for those closest to him or a chosen few. As we hear next, Jesus went into the city seeing the deep physical and spiritual needs of those around him. He encountered a leper, a man whose physical illness and social ostracism painted a picture of the condition, the spiritual condition, and disease of all mankind without God. His flesh was consumed with the disease, leaving him unfeeling and exposed to all kinds of injury. And because of his sickness, he was separated, separated from all others. As Jesus approached him, the man also fell at the feet of Jesus, asking to be made whole, to be made clean. And with just a word, 
Jesus spoke and healed the man who went full of joy into the city to tell all the things that Christ had done for him, leading more and more crowds to seek the Lord out. This was Jesus' ministry, speaking healing into people's hearts and bodies. And to strengthen and sustain him in that ministry, we see that Jesus never neglected to seek the presence of his heavenly Father, retreating often into solitude to speak to God. If that's what Jesus himself needed, oh, how much more you and I need to seek God's strength through prayer and fellowship. Dear God, we thank you for the presence of Jesus, the power of Jesus. Thank you for the healing ministry, especially the ministry of healing the deepest longings and needs of the human soul. May we live in the joy of this salvation, the joy that Jesus gives us. We thank you for today's reading and the examples of faith and the opportunity to this very day that we can also seek God by faith, that we can follow Jesus and become fishers of men. Thank you for listening to today's Bible in a Year podcast. I'm Jack Graham from Dallas, Texas. You can download the Pray.com app and make prayer a priority in your life, just like over 20 million people have done to this date. If you enjoyed this podcast, share it with someone you know and love, because by sharing this message of the Word of God, you can make an eternal difference in someone's life. And I want to encourage you to go to jackgraham.org. That's me at jackgraham.org. We have resources available to you, and we're also taking a trip, two trips next year, one to Israel leaving April the 1st, and then an Alaskan adventure and Bible study cruise in July of 2024. You can go to our website, jackgram.org, or Prestonwood, that's P-R-E-S-T-O-N-W-O-O-D.org, Prestonwood.org, for information about the trip to Israel and the cruise to Alaska. God bless you. And we look forward to joining you again the next time. This episode is sponsored by MediShare, an innovative healthcare solution for Christians to save money without sacrificing quality.